Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about depth of field and how you can achieve it with any camera, and I'm going to show you how you can do it with an iPhone as well, so you can get some images like this. You can see that nice out of focus background, makes your subject pop stand right out. This should be a good one. Let's dive deep into depth of field. Let's get into this depth of field. There's a few things that control your depth of field that you need to be aware of. The first one is the distance your subject is from the background. The closer the two are together, the more likely your background and everything behind the subject is going to be in focus. And it tends to make the picture, as you can see here, kind of bleh. There's no real place that your eye wants to go. The main subject gets confused with the background. There's just too much going on we want to be able to create a blurrier background. The one way we do that is we create distance between the subject and the background. Now, the part between the background and your subject, I refer to as the midground. That's where I've got the fries and the other sandwich and that. That is my midground, and then behind that, I have the true background. But I need all of that in various degrees of out of focus, blurriness, so it helps draw more attention to the main subject. Here's a picture, again, of everything in focus. You can see it's just, yeah. Now, here's basically the same picture where I've got the background separated and I've got some blurriness. Big difference, and it looks so much better. Here I'll put them side by side, and you can see the exact difference that I'm talking about. And the one with the blurry background, the main subject pops right out. Okay, so we've talked about the distance your subject is from the background. Now you need to talk about your lens. The higher millimeter the lens, say from a 10 millimeter lens to a 200 millimeter lens, will also make a difference to how out of focus things will be over certain distances. Let me try and explain this maybe a bit better. The closer your camera is to the subject, the blurrier the background will become. The further your camera is from your subject, the more in focus your background will become. Now, this directly relates to your f-stop. f-stop being your focal stop. You've got, say, f1.4 to, say, f32. f32 is a very small opening in the lens and requires a lot of light. Also, at f32, you're going to have a greater area of distance that is in focus. At f1.4, you're going to have a very narrow field of focus. So if I come in, say, f8, I have a reasonable amount of distance in focus and a relative distance out of focus. Now, It'll change, though, depending on where the camera is in relation to the subject. If I pull the camera right in close, like in this picture here, you can see the main subject is nice, beautiful, in focus, and I've got enough depth of field so the focus isn't just on the front part of the sandwich, but it wraps around a bit on it. But look how out of focus everything is behind. Now, let me pull back, and the only thing I've changed is the distance of the lens to the subject and now you can see the background's not as out of focus as the first image. Let me put those two side by side. So you can see nothing changed but the distance the lens was from the subject. So we have three things to consider. The distance your subject is from the background, the f-stop that you use, the opening on the lens, and the distance your lens is in camera from the subject. Those three things make a big difference to your focal length and you need to consider all that. Now in correlation with your f-stop, if you're setting your f-stop, you then have to set your ISO, the amount of light allowing to come in onto the sensor. You want to try and keep that as low as possible and then you have your shutter speed, the length of time that the lens part stays open to allow light come in. The three f-stop, ISO, shutter, all work together, those three. But we're concentrating on the aperture to control our depth of field, and we have to adjust the others accordingly. 
and that's your preference to it, I would advise though keeping your film speed, the ISO, as low as you can so you don't increase a lot of noise in the areas, especially in the darker parts of your scene. But let's kind of get into the studio bit now and have a look at my setup and see how I created these images and talk about depth a little more. Let's talk about the setup. You can see I've got a pretty good distance between the table and the background behind me. I've got a good distance between the main subject and the background behind me. So I'm going to make sure that this is pretty well out of focus. I am using the Tamron 90mm shot at f11. Now I've created some other layers behind the main subject to add some depth to the image so the whole thing doesn't look flat. I've got my cutting board and the fries, I had the other sandwich, and then the salt and pepper shaker, and then the background behind. So I've got a few layers which help create that depth and makes the hero, which is this lovely sandwich, stand out. Because we want the attention on this, we want the focus on this, and all the supporting items and other elements to help bring the image together, we want them out of focus. The amount of out of focusness, if you would, is up to you. But be aware this needs to be away from your supporting elements in order to control your depth of field. That's basically it for the setup for the depth part of it. My lighting was quite simple, lighting off to the side here, and I did have a reflector in here to bounce some light back in. That's it. If you have any questions on this kind of little setup, please leave a comment down below. But that's basically the basic principles of this setup that I did here and the images that you saw. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear a bunch of you now. So, F8, what is he, crazy? You, ne you need to be shooting at like 1.4, 2.8. And you can, and that is the photographer's decision to the depth of field that they want to achieve. But honestly, I've seen so many good food photos and product, but the depth of field is way too shallow. On a small image, it looks okay, but when you got a bigger image, that depth of field is just too narrow and the background is just too blurred. You can't distinguish any of your supporting items. I mean, it is the photographer's choice. I chose F8. It creates the right amount of blurriness for me. It puts the subject in perfect focus and like, on, like I said before on the sandwich, I get the focus wrap around on the sandwich a bit because to me there's nothing worse than just having the very front of your subject in focus and then everything else is just so blurred you can't make it out. Again, that is a photographer's choice. My opinion, I tend to shoot F8 and I shoot some food stuff at F22. Oof, mind blown, I know. But I have, especially when I'm in really close and I need lots of depth of field and I will even do what's called focus stacking where you take multiple images, compile them together to create a very, very sharp focused depth image. And I will be doing a video later on focus stacking. But yeah, don't be scared to try using a higher f-stop. Yes, you need more light to come in, but you will, to me, get a better image. You have more in focus because sometimes, like I say, the bottom of the sandwich is out of focus, the top's in focus. On a smaller image, it's fine, but anyways, I'm rambling here. That's my pause and my thought on the f-stop and the numbers that I use. I'm typically in the 8 to 13, but again, your decision. Now, I was at the beginning talking about how you can achieve this depth of field with an iPhone. Now, as most of you probably know, I don't use a lot of apps with my iPhone to try and create additional type of images or whatever. I like to see what the phone can do with its native stuff. So again, I'm using the app that came with the iPhone, just a standard camera app, but it does have a little portrait mode. And that portrait mode can work wonders. Now, there seems to be a glitch or something going on with it. I've got a clip 
and I'm showing you how to do it, but the basic to it is you put it in portrait mode, you move to your subject, and it'll tell you you're too close, you need to move further away. You move the camera away from it, and then all of a sudden, boom, background goes out of focus. Then, for some reason, it'll allow you to move back in a certain distance, and the background will stay out of focus, where before it was telling you to move further away. Now, I will give you a big warning with the portrait mode. It is not the greatest at cutting the subject out. If I was shooting a drink and I had a straw coming out of the drink, the chances are the straw, or at least part of it, will get blurred with the background. It has a hard time distinguishing your subject from the background sometimes. I'm pretty sure it's all contrast based and it gets tricked quite a bit. So be aware of that and you may have to clean up a bit of the edging in Photoshop. But on the whole, in a pinch, it works pretty good. And let me just run this clip and you'll see how I did it and I'll show you the results. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Once you're in portrait mode, you'll see at the top it says move further away. You just then simply pull your iPhone away from the subject until that disappears and the background gets blurry. Then you could take a picture or for some reason you, it allows you to move back in a certain distance before it'll say move further away. If that happens, simply pull back until the background gets out of focus and then move in and find that sweep spot just before it says move further away and then you'll be able to get a closer in picture with a blurry background out of focus. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? I don't know what, why, where, or how that that does that, but it does. So you can just move in and out, get as close as you can to get your focus. Now here is the picture taken without the portrait mode in effect. Everything in focus as a typical cell phone. Now here it is using portrait mode. Poof, that is awesome. What a difference it makes. And here I'll put them side by side. Huge difference in using your portrait mode playing the little game with the iPhone and you can get a cool image. Now, like I said, it's not the greatest at cutting it out, but it's pretty good. All right, that's what I have on depth of field. I didn't get super deep into it, but I wanted to give you the basics and the three main things. The distance your subject is from the background, the f-stop aperture that you're using, and the distance your camera and lens is from the subject. Those three hugely impact your depth of field. It's your decision on how blurred or how in focus you want things. But this is a good overview on depth of field and gets you a better understanding and gives you some trick with an iPhone. All right, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. So, until the next time.